We've all seen the iconic sight, SpaceX's Crew Dragon gently floating down under massive parachutes before splashing into the ocean. But what if one day, things don't go as smoothly as planned? Imagine instead, Crew Dragon firing its thrusters, slowing down in mid-air, and touching down with precision like something straight out of science fiction. Sounds futuristic? Well, this once-abandoned concept of propulsive landings on Dragon is making a comeback. With growing concerns over parachute reliability in spaceflight, SpaceX is exploring a way to make landings even safer and more efficient. But could thruster landings truly replace the traditional splashdown? Get ready, because in today's TechMap episode, we're diving deep into the future of spacecraft landings. Let's get started. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. In spacecraft operations, parachutes play a crucial role as they are used to slow down spacecraft significantly, reducing their speed from thousands of miles per hour to a safe landing speed. This is essential for ensuring the safety of astronauts and the integrity of the spacecraft during re-entry from deep space missions. However, in harsh landing conditions, on the contrary, the parachute becomes the most vulnerable part of the spacecraft, threatening the safety of the astronauts on board. In the history of spaceflight, there are some notable incidents involving failed parachutes on spacecraft. For example, during the Apollo 15 mission in 1971, one of the three main parachutes collapsed during descent, but the other two parachutes functioned properly, preventing a catastrophic failure. The investigation concluded that the failure was likely caused by burning reaction control system fuel that was expelled during the descent, which damaged the parachute. More seriously, the Soyuz 1 mission in 1967 witnessed the tragic death of cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov caused by the failed parachute system during re-entry. At that time, the reserve parachute became tangled with the drogue chute, preventing proper deployment. Back in this century, commercial space flights have become more popular than ever, leading to the urgency of ensuring safety. SpaceX is truly a pioneer in this trend. By following the motto, astronaut and personnel safety is SpaceX's highest priority. But it doesn't mean they don't meet any trouble with the capricious parachutes. For example, SpaceX reported failures during Crew Dragon parachute testing in 2019 and 2020. Although these failures occurred only during testing and did not affect human life, this raises the urgency of having a contingency plan in case of emergencies. Finally, they found a solution, which is to fire Dragon's thrusters for a soft landing in case of the parachutes failing, as in the statement of NASA's Steve Stitch. We have a unique capability for the first time on Crew 8 and Crew 9. It's an emergency contingency capability for landing, where if the main parachutes were all to fail, the Super Draco thrusters will fire right before the vehicle would make contact with the water, and then it would be an emergency configuration to save the crew on a really bad day. The eight powerful Super Draco thrusters, typically reserved for rare launch abort scenarios, have been activated as an emergency propulsive landing system. NASA's commercial crew program manager, Steve Stitch, during a Crew-9 press conference last September, confirmed that this capability would be enabled for the return of the Crew-8 mission. SpaceX's William Gerstenmeier provided further details, explaining that while the system has been used on several previous Dragon flights, this marks its first implementation on a NASA mission. The emergency system is designed to activate only in the event of a complete parachute failure, firing the thrusters at the last moment to ensure a safe landing for the crew. Gerstenmeier emphasized that it is not intended for partial failures, as the Dragon spacecraft is already capable of landing with one parachute out or other minor chute system issues. The system works, he outlined, when the capsule detects that there's a problem and it fires the, essentially, the Draco thrusters at the very end, and then provides a tolerable landing through the crew. So it's a, 
it's a true deep contingency. This news is sure to excite any SpaceX fan who has been following the company for long enough to remember that the idea of powered Dragon landings was abandoned eight years ago. Back in 2016, Elon Musk took to X to announce an ambitious plan. SpaceX would send a Dragon capsule to land on Mars as early as 2018. The spacecraft, dubbed Red Dragon, would mark a major step toward his ultimate vision of colonizing the Red Planet. However, the plan was then slipped to 2020 as SpaceX prioritized its commercial crew program and the Falcon 9's return to flight after a launch pad explosion in September 2016. The mission was designed as an uncrewed test flight, with Musk noting that Dragon's SUV-sized interior wasn't ideal for long-duration crewed missions beyond the moon. The Red Dragon was engineered for a daring new approach, propulsive landing. Instead of relying solely on parachutes, the spacecraft would use built-in thrusters to slow itself down and gently touch down on solid ground by landing legs, a concept SpaceX had already tested in McGregor, Texas. The mission would launch aboard a souped-up version of the Falcon rocket, but in 2017, SpaceX made a sharp pivot. Musk announced that the company was scrapping plans for propulsive Dragon landings, citing safety concerns and the difficulty of certifying the system for crewed missions. It would have taken a tremendous amount of effort to qualify that for safety, particularly for crew transport, he said. The end of propulsive landing development means a Dragon will not be able to land on Mars and the Red Dragon program has been put on the back burner. More importantly, SpaceX had reconsidered its entire Mars landing strategy. What once seemed like the best approach, using a heat shield and side-mounted thrusters, was no longer the optimal solution. Instead, resources were shifted to the development of Starship, a much larger vehicle better suited for Mars missions. There was a time that I thought the Dragon approach to landing Mars, where you've got a base heat shield and side-mounted thrusters, would be the right way to land on Mars, he said. Now I'm pretty confident that is not the right way and there's a far better approach. This decision meant that Dragon capsules would continue landing on Earth via parachutes, rather than powered touchdowns. Technically, the engines required for propulsive landings remained installed as they were crucial for Dragon's in-flight abort system. However, without landing legs, actually pulling off a propulsive touchdown would be extremely difficult. You'd have to land it on some pretty soft landing pad, Musk admitted. While Red Dragon was shelved, Musk didn't completely rule out a return to propulsive landings in the future. And now we have already seen it in another form, an alternative approach for splashdown with parachutes. Landing in water helps absorb much of the impact, as water's physical properties provide a more forgiving cushion compared to solid ground. The fluid nature of water allows it to disperse the force of impact more effectively, reducing the stress on both the spacecraft and its crew. Water can also help dissipate heat generated during re-entry, which is another critical factor in spacecraft design. The heat shield of a spacecraft is designed to protect it from the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry, but water can further assist in cooling down the spacecraft after splashdown. Another reason is that splashdowns allow for a wider range of recovery locations. Since oceans cover most of the Earth's surface, spacecraft can be designed to land in various bodies of water, providing flexibility in mission planning and recovery operations. Because of this, Splashdown remains one of the most common methods for astronauts returning to Earth. Nevertheless, there are still some challenges and considerations. Firstly, retrieving the spacecraft and crew from the water can be complex and time-consuming. It requires specialized recovery vessels and equipment to ensure safe and efficient retrieval. Second, exposure to seawater can lead to corrosion and damage to the spacecraft's components. This necessitates careful design and post-recovery maintenance to mitigate these effects. This is what Sierra Space, an aerospace company headquartered in Louisville, Colorado, 
cited in developing its Dream Chaser spacecraft, along the lines of NASA's space shuttle design, rather than the popular capsule design. Dream Chaser was designed for smooth re-entry to Earth with the ability to land on commercial runways at fewer than 1.5 Gs, setting it apart as a versatile and efficient spacecraft for both cargo return and potential emergency astronaut recovery missions. One of the most significant advantages of the Dream Chaser is its gentle re-entry profile, which reduces the stress on cargo to a considerable extent. This makes it particularly well-suited for returning delicate science experiments without exposing them to the harsh deceleration forces that can often damage sensitive equipment. For instance, in missions where precise temperature control is required, such as those involving biological samples or advanced electronics, the Dream Chaser's gentle re-entry ensures that these items are preserved in optimal condition. This capability also provides a potential advantage in emergency situations, allowing astronauts to be quickly returned to a hospital by landing on a runway, offering more options and better outcomes compared to splashdowns in remote areas. In such scenarios, the proximity to medical facilities can be crucial for timely treatment and care, significantly improving the chances of successful recovery for astronauts who may have experienced health issues during their spaceflight. Moreover, the ability to land on commercial runways allows for rapid access to cargo, enabling quick unloading of critical supplies like time-sensitive research materials or medical equipment. This operational flexibility reduces reliance on specific recovery zones, such as those required for splashdowns, and enhances the efficiency of missions by allowing for a wider range of recovery locations. For example, if a mission requires the immediate analysis of samples collected in space, the Dream Chaser can land at a nearby airport, facilitating swift transportation to a laboratory for further study. This capability is particularly beneficial for scientific research, where timely analysis can lead to groundbreaking discoveries and advancements. Additionally, the use of existing infrastructure like commercial runways minimizes the need for specialized recovery equipment and vessels, which are often required for splashdowns. This not only reduces operational costs, but also streamlines the recovery process, making it more efficient and reliable. Furthermore, Dream Chaser's reusability, facilitated by its non-ablative heat shield, can significantly increase the number of missions per year. Unlike ablative shields that are designed to burn away during re-entry, protecting the spacecraft but requiring replacement after each use, the Dream Chaser's heat shield can withstand multiple re-entries without needing to be replaced. This reusability leads to substantial cost savings over time, as the expense of manufacturing new heat shields for each mission is eliminated. As a result, the Dream Chaser becomes an attractive option for frequent cargo transport missions where the ability to rapidly recover, refurbish, and relaunch the spacecraft can meet the growing demand for space access. This efficiency is crucial in a competitive space industry, where reducing turnaround times and costs can provide a significant competitive edge. In addition to these operational benefits, the Dream Chaser's design also reflects Sierra Space's commitment to advancing space technology. By leveraging existing runway infrastructure, Sierra Space is pushing the boundaries of how spacecraft can be integrated into conventional aviation systems. This integration not only enhances the practicality of space missions, but also paves the way for future innovations in space transportation. As the space industry continues to evolve, with more emphasis on reusability and efficiency, spacecraft like the Dream Chaser are poised to play a pivotal role in shaping the future of space exploration and commercial spaceflight. Overall, the Dream Chaser's unique combination of smooth re-entry, runway landing capabilities, and reusability positions it as a leading spacecraft for a wide range of applications, from scientific research to emergency recovery missions, making it an invaluable asset in the pursuit of advancing space technology and exploration.